So it's time for our first keynote speaker. I'd like to introduce Lee Zhang, the founder and CEO of Envision Group. Lee started the company in 2006 with just 10 employees. Today, it's a leading global energy company with business units in smart wind turbine, as well as the world's largest artificial intelligence and Internet of Things operating system. And he's joining us today to talk in more detail about the challenges and opportunities presented by a net zero transformation. Please welcome Li Zhang. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning and a good evening to everyone. Uh, today, I think the most people here have the, achieved the consensus. We should and we are able to achieve net zero by middle of century. Especially recently, the Chinese President Xi announced by 2060, China will also achieve net zero. From my point of view, because Envision is the company early on is urged China to, to be net zero. And uh, I strongly believe once China achieved the consensus internally, and uh, they should be able to move in much faster. So hopefully, I think that China also should be able to do by 2050 to be net zero. For instance, so President Xi announced China by 2030 will be uh, reached 20% non-fossil fuel. However, so according to our latest five years plan, by 2025, China is able to achieve 20% non-fossil fuel, which is five years early. Uh, than the original expectation. So I think it's, things move moving very fast here. So then, so I think that once we have this, such a global consensus, with we envision such a net zero world. So how are we going to power the planet? So definitely, we need the world need a new coal, new gas, new oil, and a new grid. So what is going to be the new coal? So today we are seeing wind and the solar is achieving greater parity on electric generations. And wind and the solar is definitely becoming the new coal. And what is new gas? So battery storage is replacing this peak demand shaving gas power plant global wise. So the battery storage is becoming the new gas. And on the demand side, hydrogen and uh, batteries is replacing oil, it's become the new oil. So we see the battery pack is achieving 100 US dollar this year by the pack. So then what we can see is this distributed intermittent demand on the you know, very frequent changing charging patterns for millions of EVs, but also on this intermittent energy supply from wind and solar. The world need the new grid. What is new grid? Think about the nature of grid. It's about connectivity and the balancing. So today, the old grid, the physical grid, is not being able to handle the billions of devices for intermittent and real-time balancing. So the new grid, from our point of view, is AIoT platform. So we need to create the Android system for a new energy world. So, you know, once we are solving the cost of energy from generation, what we are really facing is solving the cost of a synergy. How are we going to synchronize the 5,000 gigawatt battery demands for charging with someday no wind is blowing, no, no sunshine is, is coming out? So such a kind of a synchronization is the most toughest challenge we have to face by using AI plus IoT. That's kind of open platform. 
So starting from the weather forecasting, so you no know, once wind and solar dominating the our energy world, so we have to clearly un clearly understand the weather pattern much days early to the orchestration of millions of charging stations. So I can share some examples what we are doing in Singapore. So Envision is helping Singapore with smart nation by providing our operating system for IoT. So for example, we are working with all the building owners of Singapore because the Singapore 40% of energy is consumed by the HVAC, this air conditioning cooling systems. But this 40% energy HVAC consumption could be a very become a very effective flexible load because then you don't need even to add the leasing battery. So by combining this HVAC system from the chiller to cooling tower to VAV and I had a unit, then every building can coupled with the weather pattern change to adjust the chiller and to avoid this peak demand, but also to saving energy. So using the AIoT platform, the every HVAC is becoming the automatic energy trader. They can decide when to buy energy once energy is lower. And also they are able to sell back the system the flexibility, they can curtail this energy usage because the cool water for the system is a very good storage for energy. They can delay that by changing the control mechanism. So that's one example. Another example, so Singapore by 2030, they have the kind of mandate. They want to produce 30% of food domestically, so which is going to create lots of challenge, lots of energy usage for indoor farming. However, this challenge can also be turned into opportunity because the plants, they can have different sleeping pattern. They can sleep in the daytime and they can be a very good balancing tool. So then all the indoor farming, we can change the LED power lighting, and also to changing the microclimate, which is a humidity and also temperature. So what's more importantly, so we are making the plant more customized so we can tailor the taste for the customer. So for instance, if you like the strawberry much sweeter, we can change spectrum of LED light or we have add on some recipe, which is different weather condition, humid condition to make this plant more tasty for you. So you can see, so we are still making energy. However, we trying to make the AIoT system to unlock the innovation of a scientist and a customer to make energy much interesting, also much flexible and much easier to be integrated with the energy system. So today, from the new coal, new gas, new oil, and the new grid, this is all about technology. So I think the people have almost achieved consensus. The technology part is easy. We consider it's going to be solved. And especially from Envision, so we are the global leader of wind turbines, but also global leader of a storage system apart from IoT platform. So we are forecasting. So according to our internal product plan by 2023, so we are able to achieve US dollar 1.5 US cents for one kilowatt hour wind electricity for the wind speed, the medium wind speed around the seven meter per second, which is probably is 40% of the area they are able to do in China, northern, northern part of China. So, and we are also, we are 
able to make the storage cost around 1.5 US cents per kilo hour. So we have developed the battery cell, which is able to charge and discharge 10,000 times for the life cycle, and also dramatically reduce the leasing battery cost. So then the toughest part is on regulations. We clearly see the regulation is falling behind the technology. So what kind of regulations? So today, for the Paris Agreement, we have the objectives, 2050. We have the roadmap by 2030, 2040, 2050, all the renewable energy targets. But we need the new mechanism. What kind of mechanism? The mechanism is, for instance, how can we ask the grid company to open more data on the IoT, AIoT platform to make people exchange data and to make developer to develop leading cutting edge you know, APPs? How can we effectively encourage the distributed renewable energy into the wholesale market? How can we effectively pricing virtual power plant? How can we encourage collaboration between charging stations and a car OEM and also the grid company to work together to orchestrating the millions of cars? So this is about area we need a clear mechanism to improve, to catch up with technology. So that's what we think, we strongly believe the new regulation is become very important. So now, so everyone is envisioning 2050 for such a net zero world. For me, this net zero world is so attractive. Why? It's not because of make us out of risk. It's not because it make feel it's so green without pollution, but such a net zero world with almost zero cost energy. So wind and solar, which is totally is going to open our innovation and also make our life much earlier. We're going to pay little with your heating bill. We're going to pay less for train ticket. We are going to use the extremely low cost of electricity to desalinate seawater and even take them into the desert to make the desert become oasis. We can make your basement become a very cheap indoor farming to make what I, whatever vegetable you like to taste. So it's so affordable. It's everywhere. It's so abundant. It's going to change everyday life. So that's why such a net zero world is so attractive to me. So today, so especially after COVID, we all realize this systematic risk is so challenging for everyone. So human beings, they are all in a unity. So luckily COVID, we, we are still be able to find vaccines. We are going to soon or later to meet each other, but there's no vaccine for the climate crisis. So then what's the solution? The solution is that we have to act much faster, much earlier with a great sense of urgency to solving the toughest challenge within the next 10 years. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lee. Well, we've got the questions coming in for you uh, from our global audience. And the first question that I'd like to put, put to you is, how will Western economies support China in achieving their net zero targets? I think is a... A uh, West, West economy is already helping China to achieve zero target. For instance, I think uh, I was educated in the UK. So when I was in London, so 
I'm being waked up, I think, in 2005 or six by the climate change we are facing, which make me have a sense of urgency. I decide to leave the financial industry to make a more meaningful life. That is to solving the sustainability challenge for mankind. That's what we named Envision. Envision is a name when I was studying, when I still working in London. I think Envision is a vision for energy and environment. EM stands for harmonizing energy environment. So I think this kind of uh, consensus and also the expectation and also the voices and uh, collaboration is also is helping China, especially Chinese leaders, is changing their mindset to have that commitment. Now today we see they already have a clear commitment by net zero by 2060. I would like to say they will not let us disappointed. We probably we should be able to do by 2050. Well, actually, that's a good point. So let me follow up with one of our, our next questions, which is how is China going to reach net zero by 2060 while maintaining its current rate of economic growth? Yes. You know, as I said, I, by 2023, so for northern part of China, which is uh, abundant of wind and solar to power the China entire energy demand for five times. We are able to make wind energy as lower as 1.5 US cents per kilo hour, which means this is going to really to, to reduce the operating cost for Chinese energy system, which is going to make China is more effective on making goods for the, for the rest of the world. So we are going to reduce cost by adopting renewable energy. Renewable energy is not a burden, it's a really attractive, effective solution for such a big economy. Absolutely. Li, thank you so much. We're going to have to leave it there. Li Zhang joining us from Envision. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you.